she gave us to get out of bed this morning and be in your house, and we just thank you for that too. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Once again, amen. All right. Is anybody did you get anything? Did you get? Okay. I was I was dragging out time. <clears throat> Our lesson day is uh, October the fourth. Lesson five: The grace of God in a uh, sinful world. You know, God is God is uh, gracious even in a sinful world today. It's not like He's changed. We read about the the world in the uh, 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 back in Genesis, <clears throat> but the same. The same thing is wrong with our world today as it was wrong with the world then. It's, it's a sinful nature of human beings, and um, God still loves us. All right. <clears throat> the text today is Genesis. Is the text today is Genesis uh, chapter six, verses one through twenty-two. The focus is Genesis six one through fourteen. Key verse is but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis six eight. Sunday devotional is the uh, is the world that was Second Peter three, chapter three, verse three through nine. The, the application I'll read it, and then we'll go back and read the the uh, Sunday devotional. The student will conclude that although sin must be punished, God always sends abundant grace that will allow His will to be done. <clears throat> This is Second Peter, chapter three, verse three. Knowing that, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, "Where is the promise of his coming?" For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the uh, word of God the heavens were were of old, and the earth and standing out of the water and in the water. What about the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished, but the heavens and the earth were all, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and uh, perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant. Of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. All right, one more verse. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not uh, slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all uh, should come to repentance. <clears throat> yeah, let me read that another verse. <laughs> All right. You know, we, we hear that, we've heard that all our lives. There's uh, that verse where it says, a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. And it can be looked at in many different directions, the way people understand it to be. But listen, when God doesn't live in time, and that's all that really means. He, do, he doesn't live on a time schedule, and we can't put him on one. No matter how people might want to do that, God doesn't live under time. Time was given to mankind in the beginning to, for days and, and uh, 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 seasons, and the Bible says that. God is eternal. He doesn't need to have a time clock or uh, uh, a nighttime, a daytime, or a calendar of any kind. It's just that He doesn't live under days. So. We can we can we can say well if a, if a thousand years is like like a uh, a day to the Lord then then seven days of creation must have been seven thousand years and that's what people do or six thousand years excuse me that's that's not the case God just doesn't live in a, in a time in a time frame that we that we do so um, remember to look at it that way don't don't use that scripture in any other way okay. All right, first look, from the moment God promised that a Redeemer in Genesis 3.15, Satan began systematically attempting to prevent and destroy that plan. God was very patient with, pe patient with people during this first civilization, but when his re redemptive 
efforts were finally rejected. God had no other choice but to destroy that uh, wicked world, saving only eight souls to uh, preserve his promise. It is very important that we understand that these events are not uh, legend, fables, or uh, fairy tales. The account of the flood has been minimized and ridiculed by many people in our world today, and the result is that many others do not take the, these scriptures literally. This is sad because this is history, and if we refuse to learn these lessons, this history of destruction will be repeated in our own lives. And he says in our own lives, that the kind of destructive is never going to happen again. God said, well, that rainbow, um, that's not going to happen anymore. But where our, this world is, like we read in, in Peter, it, it's waiting judgment of fire. Um, just like Sodom and Gomorrah was judged with, with uh, a fire falling from heaven, the, um, this world is going to suffer that same consequence sometime in the future. And... Uh, not a flood. All right. When we we learn in Peter in Second Peter three six through twelve that there is uh, three worlds. God inspired Peter to write about the world that perished in the flood, the world we uh, presently inhabit, and the world that is yet to come, with which is the new heaven and the new earth. The first world was destroyed by water, and the world that is now is reserved under fire against the day of judgment. In both cases, judgment comes because of the evil <laughs> conduct of ungodly men. This is an account of abundant sin, but it also speaks of abundant grace. The key parts of this account are the grace that was continually extended to a sinful world that was, accept, was accepted in the respective parts of Noah. Oh, oh. Key Part of this account are the grace that was continually extended to a sinful world that was accepted in the repetitive, receptive parts of Noah and his family. Okay, I got it there. <laughs> Receptives. They they accepted in which y'all y'all heard me say this. We don't hear nothing about the family other than they were there. I'm not saying that they weren't saved. I'm not saying that they weren't believers. But biblically, we read that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah did. It doesn't say Noah's wife did. It doesn't say Noah's children did. It doesn't say Noah's children's wives did. But Noah did. And and we can we can look at it and say, well, you know, like any family. Parents may be saved. There might be one parent saved. There might be both parents saved. The kids may be saved. But also, you might look at a family and one in the family be saved. It might be the kid and not the parents. And it might be the parents and not the kid. We, if we had read it, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and also his family too, then we could say the whole family was saved. But one man, one man, Noah, was the reason for humanity to be saved one man and 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 that being that one man is, is a reflection of the same thing that we understand as our our lord and savior one man one man our lord jesus christ came into this world and died for all sinners and and noah through god's word built an ark and saved the world so this i don't i don't see it any different and i can stay there all day about it but still the fact of the matter is we can we can we know that it had to be more than Noah there, but obviously it was Noah that made the difference. One person and one person one person in anybody's life can make a difference, and that's the the point I'm trying to make. All right. <clears throat> Closer look, great uh, wickedness. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also uh, after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children, 
to them the, son, the same become mighty men which were of old men of renown. We, we can talk about that all we want to. And there's a whole lot of opinions. I got an opinion. I'm not going to give you my opinion. And uh, uh, I understand that there are some things that we're just never going to understand biblically. We could, we could argue this and uh, uh, those scriptures, and I've had them come up many times in my life with other people and also with myself. I don't understand them. I don't, I don't, God has not given me a clear view of those scriptures to tell y'all the how the, the, uh, those things happened, you know, what was it? And the, and the writer talks about it and I'm going to let him give his best analogy. Okay. The events of these first two verses have been the focus of much discussion and speculation over the years. Some suggest, some suggest that the sons of God here are fallen angels who uh, interbred with human women. This seems likely because, unlikely because if these were fallen angels, they would not be called the sons of God. If they were uh, good angels, they would not have committed this uh, breach of God's will. Also, we have the plain, uh, plain statement of Jesus in Matthew 22, 30, that angels do not marry. Some suggest that this is a cross, mar a cross marriage of the descendants of Cain with the descendants of Seth. The sons sons of God would be the descendants of Seth and the daughters of men would be the descendants of Cain. This uh, theory is at least possible. Whatever this uh, intermarriage was, it was a violation of God's will <clears throat> or, or for mankind. Evidently, the Holy Spirit had uh, led men and women not to enter into these marriages. Men and women refused refused the leadership of the Holy Spirit and God then uh, promised that spiritual leader promised that spiritual leadership or what is uh, called striving would stop. God then plainly uh, told mankind that 120 years were determined in which men had an opportunity to repent and follow the will of God. Men rejected this appeal and appeal and the result is mentioned in verse four. All kinds of genetic uh, variations that God had not intended were the result of these intermarriages. If this situation were left alone, everyone on earth would eventually have been affected. The result of uh, ignoring God's leadership was, was genetic change among humanity. There are three in, uh, interesting things mentioned here. First, there are, there are giants in the earth. Remember that this was in a uh, world that has uh, perished, so we cannot assume that what we think of a uh, normal, what is normal, uh, we think of as normal now was normal then. Many physical changes came about because of the flood. The, sec the second was that there were mighty men. This may refer to great physical strength. The third result was, the third result was that there were men of renown. Those are interesting terms in the Hebrew language that uh, merit further study. Okay, so he, he talks about it, and, and I've heard that my whole life. You know, uh, 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 Cain Cain killed Abel, and they run him off, and and uh, he was he was not considered uh, the the sons of man, but the Seth's children were, uh, or, or God, excuse me, the son uh, the Seth's were. I don't know. They, there's, and I'm sure you could have a thousand people write about it, and they all have some little bit of twerking of the difference in their thoughts. I, uh, I just know that there's, there's more to it than we'll understand until we leave this world. Okay, they, they do know that there's bigger people, and you can see all kind of stuff on the internet these days. They can make up a skeleton that looks like it's a hundred foot long, and his head's that big around, and, and I've seen those kind of things, you know, but. But we do know that there were some people, they under, they know here, the people here, it was on the Suwannee River when the Spaniards came here, the, the, they said the average woman at that point in time, at that point, was six foot. And the average man was six foot six. The average. So there was people taller than that, and there was people shorter than that, but they, they averaged six six. You know, human human beings have just in the last couple hundred years got to where they're big people. And 
<clears throat> the Spaniards, when they came over, they were up to about four foot something, you know? So the average man was less than five foot tall, and they got over here and they seen all these people were six foot six. This, who was it that David killed? Goliath. So obviously those, those genetics are somewhere still in our makeup that because they, they made it through the flood because they was giant still with, with uh, uh, Goliath and his family. So anyway, to, to keep from dwelling on it too much, this is just something you can't understand. It's just something we don't have enough biblical uh, knowledge or scriptures to give us an insight on that to understand it. So let's let, let's let God tell us. And we you know if, they're, if they was human beings, then they're obviously they still have an opportunity to, to repent and be saved, and we may get to see some of those people when we leave here anyway, right? Some of them might be in heaven. Some of those giants that we were talking about, yeah. If we know each other as, as we did on, on, if we were to know each other in that way, all right. Divine grief. <clears throat> And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, "It will, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them and I've always thought about, well, Porter didn't kill fish. And, and he didn't, he was mentioned fish. They, they, all, the, all the other animals on this earth were going to be destroyed. That's, I don't know if he wanted to kill fish, but kill them too, even, even with the water. So I don't understand that. But all right, it says, and God saw, and this is verse, verse 5, the wickedness of man, man was great. Well, we've ramped up in our society in that same way here, even though the rest of the world has been headed that way longer than we have. And uh, some of them are, are not as far into their into that ramping up sin as we are here now today. But obviously sin has been here from, from the time Adam and Eve was in the garden. The uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for, the, for that same purpose, the, the reason because of their their sinful nature, they they was constantly in their minds thinking of, thinking uh, sinfully. And uh, I think that our world is headed that direction. I don't think we're that far from being that same world that Sodom and Gomorrah were that God destroyed. And it gives us more reason to know that the things in our scripture are, are ramping up to God, uh, to that Antichrist coming into uh, uh, that position of power and our world changing completely. So... All right. And it repented the Lord. And I'm, I'm going to read, I'll read what the writer wrote about this to you. It says, The heart of God was grieved because of the sin of mankind. Our sin breaks the heart of God. And that's just, you know, when we sin, it breaks God's heart. Well, think about God's got a heart. And God's got a mind. God's got a body. If he's got a heart, he's got a body. And when it says that we were created in the image of God, he was created in the image of God. When Christ came here, he was that image of God. He, he was a bod bodily form, uh, um, in a bodily form, and but he totally God also. So when, when we try to separate God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it's impossible. The only time God has ever been separated, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, was when Christ was on that cross. And he died. He didn't die physically. He died a death that we will never suffer because of our sinful nature. He died spiritually. And, and it says that he, he was capable of bringing himself back. And uh, but God the Father brought him back. So it's, uh, when they were separated, for somebody to be eternal and separated in that way had to have been a, a blow to, we can't, we can't imagine, we can't even fathom that separation. We can't. Most people don't even can't fathom the separation that our spirit's going to have from our uh, heavenly Father if they don't accept Christ the Savior. We can't fathom it, and uh, we really can't see the depths of those things either. 
but the lost the lost will if they die in that state. All right. When confronted by man's sin, God has only three choices. He can ignore it, in which call, uh, case the rebellion will go on forever un unchecked and unpunished. God could force man to obey him like we might, uh, might manipulate a robot. He could impose his will on us by force. But if he did, the opportunity for us to love God is forever lost. The only uh, other choice uh, is for God to judge sin. God must ultimately withdraw from those who refuse to love him. This, uh, this ancient world refused the love and guidance of God, and in doing so, they chose judgment uh, for themselves. This uh, principle still applies to, uh, pe to people, and that is today. We still have that same principle. If, if we will not accept Christ as Savior, then at some point, God is just going to say, okay. But how many times is he going to do? He says he's, he's long-suffering. He's long-suffering for us to come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to die in a sinful state. Nobody. But it's their choice. And I think sometimes that's sure it'd have been a whole lot easier if God had just made made me not do those things. You know, if he would, if he would have, you know, if he'd just, it'd been so much easier. But when I come to him in the in the same love that I did, what I what I have humbled myself in the way that I did uh, under under the Lord's uh, under God and the Lord's uh, uh, love for me, I don't know that I would have done it that way. If, if you know, there's and we talked about it recently. There's with, a, with an animal and not just dogs, but animals, and we're human beings are not animals that people might think that we are. And there's a lot of matter think we evolved in the same way, but there there's two ways. To, to train an animal to do what you want them to do. And God didn't want to train us. He didn't want to train us, but he, he would he would love he would love for us to come to him in love or fear. Come to him in fear is better than come not coming to him at all. But those two ways, it's either in love or fear that you to train an animal. And God God doesn't see us that way. He sees us as being like him. And we read that in Genesis. We're like him. He created us in his image. And he wants us to, to grow in that spiritual walk with him to be closer to what he is. And uh, you can't do that if you force somebody. You ever you ever heard it? There's got to be love on both sides. And you can love something. If it don't love you back, it ain't love. It just ain't. All right. All right. Uh, grace and uh, deliverance. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's that's a great verse right there. Noah found grace, and I, 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 you know, I wonder how. If you're a Christian, if you've accepted Christ as Savior, you found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You found grace, but if you haven't, then that grace is not there. Grace, grace is abundant. You know, there's more grace than we could ever use up. I mean, it's not like uh, us having money and spending it all or or, or having, having uh, something and, and running out of it, there's there's more grace than you can ever use up. And, it's, and, and, and the way to use that grace is uh, accepting Christ as Savior and believing in faith that he will take care of the things that you're in need of. All right. So, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are, genera these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. And perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. I, I'll say it again. It doesn't say nothing about Noah's wife, Shem, Ham, or Japheth, or their wives. It says Noah. It takes there. There's been a many of people that we read about in historical records of, not biblical, but historical records that made an impact in the world. It could have been a good one. It could have been a bad one. I had a school teacher tell me one time, and I, I will never forget it. I'll, if I talk to her, I'll tell her. I understand what she was talking about. She says, there's two kind of people in the world. As a Christian, I know that there's, there's, there's lost and there's saved. With her, she said, there's two kind of people in the world. There's followers and there's leaders. There's no other kind. There's either followers or leaders. And you can, you can follow the wrong, the wrong person. Or you can lead in the wrong direction, or you can lead in the right direction. 
she told she told me that I was the cause of the other kids being in trouble. It wasn't their fault as much as it was my fault because I was leading them in the wrong direction rather than me leading them in the right direction. And she, she made it clear. I could do one or the other. I could, I could be that one that led in the right direction because there was going to be people that followed and I was not a follower. I was a leader. Or I could lead them in the right direction. And, and you know, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a world full of people that are just followers. Are just followers, and they're following the wrong direction. They're following people in the wrong direction. All right. Well, well, my my point is Noah was a, a just man. He he was a good man. He believed in the Lord, and guess what he done? He taught his family that that was the right way, and he led them in the right direction. So if they were saved or not, they were raised in the right house. Amen. They were raised in the right house. They had the right spiritual leader above them, uh, or in, uh, leading them. And it, it, what, if, what if he had not done what he did? Then there would have been no hope that we wouldn't be here. So, all right. <clears throat> and Noah began, uh, and Noah begot, begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was, excuse me, in verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. This, uh, I think that, we're not far from the same situation in our time right now. Our world is full of, of, of a, that sinful uh, nature of man and, and a lost uh, world. And uh, uh, it's a violent place. People, you know how much gun sale has went up in the last 10 years? In the last six months? Just in the last six months, but in the last 10 years in general. You know, it's, it's not just that. People understand that just in the last six months of things going on, how many they can't they can't keep sh shells on you know cartridges on the shelf can't keep them. And it's been, why why would people do that? Just because they like guns. There's, there's a lot of people who got guns that don't like guns. The reason they got guns is to protect themselves because this world is is going in the direction that it was when Noah was building that ark and preaching to those people, telling them, hey. <coughs> God is going to judge this world, and He's going to judge you and I in the same way uh, at some point. And if you if you've not accepted uh, uh, Him for who He is and His Son for who He is, then there's going to be a flood, and it's not going to be a flood of water. It's going to take you out of this world. All right. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth, all flesh. Now, I, the thing is, I look at this world, and I, I, know, I know I shouldn't. I look at this world and think, we ain't, no, we ain't even close to being there yet. We still got time. You know, I don't want time, but we got time to talk to those that, that are lost and try to lead them in the right direction because we're not near as bad as it was when Noah's, in Noah's day because we only know that the one soul was, was the one that had believed. The one soul. And if even if they was eight souls, they was eight people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven people in this church today. Obviously, one of them has found grace in the eyes of the Lord. At least one person has found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So everybody here can't be like it was in Noah's day and uh, and and lost. There's a world full of a lot of people that are saved. I really believe that. And uh, so we haven't got there yet. It's going to get a whole lot worse before that, and people just—I don't—I 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 don't say it to try to scare nobody. I don't—I don't preach it trying to get somebody to walk out. I'm telling you, we are in our on our way to that point in time that God's talking about in the, in the Scripture, and we ain't nowhere near close to being there yet. It may ramp up quite quicker than it has in the last couple of twenty years. And it may all happen in a year. It may happen in six months. And it may take another 20 years. But either way, look how much it's got to change for it to be like it was in Noah's day. Look how much. It's got to be bad. Uh, all right. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh that had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. 
for the earth is filled with violence through uh, uh through through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the with the earth. Make thee an ark of a gopher wood. Uh, Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And we can, I could stand up here and try to make y'all believe that there was an ark, and that really there was things really did happen. But if you if you don't believe it, then you can't believe none of the stuff that you read biblically, because that's just part of our scripture, and it's God's word. And He says they was an ark, and they're still looking for the ark. I don't know. Gopher wood might not be the best wood to preserve. I don't know. Nobody knows actually what the gopher wood, they try to figure out what gopher wood was. You know, I don't know what the gopher wood was. Guess what? There might not be no more gopher wood. It might have all died in the flood. <laughs> the one that they don't believe happened. But uh, really, we understand that the, every picture we see of the ark is this kind of rounded front, big old shit made out of, and that's not what the ark was. It was just a floating box. It didn't. It didn't need no rudder. It didn't need none of those those things. God, God uh, had him build this big old box, put all these animals in it, and he was the one that steered it to where it was going. God kept them protected in that ark. This, uh, it was, they, didn't, they didn't need to try to do any of that stuff. He says, "Go get, go do, go do this. Build it." And it took a man's lifetime to build this thing. I can't, I can't imagine uh, um, having to build this ark, and, and even with his sons, can you imagine the job? Of building that thing, it was huge. We, we see we see side skyscrapers now, but it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and all the equipment we got today to do those things. They didn't have a log mill. They didn't have a log mill, and they had to make the stuff that they were putting on the logs at that. So it was a job that that uh, took God's hand to be a part of that too. We uh, sometimes I can't imagine life as being overwhelming for the things that's going on in our life. Well, God's got His hand in that too. And if we just let Him, then He can help us. He'll help us pitch us to pitch ourselves where we can not soak in those things that may uh, uh, hurt us in our life. All right. So I'm gonna read what He says here. It says Noah is a very important biblical character. He is mentioned 51 times in the Bible. In verse 9, we find the third of the generation statement of Genesis. Noah, like uh, everyone in the Bible and everyone else in the world, was saved by grace uh, through faith. So we, we can they might have lived under the law after this. They weren't living under the law then, but those that would have lived under the law, they weren't saved by the law at all. They were saved by grace. And uh, so we think about those that were saved in those times uh, uh, before the law. How are they saved? They were saved by grace. Amen? All right. No one was ever saved by bringing a sacrifice, by keeping the law, or by doing good works. Salvation is the gift of God that is accepted in faith by mankind. Every human being must personally find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Every human being. Personally. It's a, it's a relationship that you have with, with our Lord and Savior one-on-one. -on -one. I, I can pray for your salvation. I can I can preach to you about salvation. I can talk to you about salvation. But the only way that you can find salvation is for you to have that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ yourself. All right. Because he um, believed uh, God, Noah was just in his generation. He, he stood out from the other men of his day who had uh, forsaken the leadership of God and uh, behaved as they pleased. Noah's righteous conduct grew out of a righteous heart. He walked with God because he trusted God in his heart. In any, any age, our uh, faith precedes our actions. We do what we, we believe. It can never be the other way around. No amount of behavior will ever um, compel and believe. Hebrews 11, 7 tells us that Noah uh, operated according to his faith and the will, uh, warning of impeding doom. God that gave to him. All right. This uh, we we should do the same thing, in which God has given us those things biblically in Scripture. He's telling us. He's he's gave he's given us. He's given us warnings of impending doom. He's given it to every human being on this earth. 
we, we can say, well, maybe so-and-so wasn't raised up in a Christian house or they, they don't get to hear, they don't have no churches they're aware of, they don't have no Bibles, but we understand that, that the Holy Spirit is not limited to just those that's got a Bible. He's not limited to those those that had, had a, a family member that was a Christian. He's not limited to those people and not the whole world. The Holy Spirit has wooed the hearts of every man to ever be born on this earth. So we uh, uh, Noah was, was, was the one that found grace in the eyes of the Lord because he believed. And uh, we have a, an unbelieving world today. And I want to read about this. This, this, I want to read how big the ark was, and then we'll, we'll go down to the final word. All in all, the ark was a marvel of engineering. If we apply the standards of cubic, uh, standard cubic of 18 inches, and they measure from here to here, we understand that. Was a, some people would have been bigger, some people would have been smaller, and that might not have been exactly the same measurement, but close to 18 inches. The ark was 450 uh, foot long, 75 foot wide, and 45 foot high. That's a pretty big building. And that's what it would have been, a building. Sitting out there on the ground in a dry place, waiting for water to come up high enough to make it flow. This, uh, I can I can imagine the scoffers that come around and told him how stupid he was for believing what he believed and doing what he done. And I can I can see the scoffers in our lives too, that, tell, that think about how crazy you are to believe what you believe or do what you do concerns our love for our Lord and Savior. This uh, people just can't understand it because they don't they don't they don't understand who Christ is. They don't have him in their life. They don't understand that God God is who he is. And uh, they will never until they until they humble themselves and, and, and ask for forgiveness in their life to understand what we we feel. It's a, it's not something that we can show somebody, but it is it's something we feel in our hearts and our minds and we understand all right. Noah, Noah must have seemed foolish to the generations that perished in the flood. Their, their lives were busy with normal things like eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage. Noah was preaching uh, that the world would end and, and building an ark while gathering all kinds of animals. His, uh, his prophecy and his plan must have seemed uh, ridiculous and that it does to people today with us. They, 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 they look at salvation as being ridiculous. They don't believe there's a God. They don't believe, believe uh, in, uh, uh, in, in our Lord and Savior. And they don't want a part of it. But we know that there's always been a seed there. The Holy Spirit has taught to every soul. They rejected, not, didn't believe. They rejected that thing that God planted in them. And, and everybody... Ever, ever, ever culture in this world has believed there's a God. Now, I might even look at look at Hawaii. They might have thought that volcano was a God, but they believe in some higher power. And the uh, uh, and I'm not trying to take away from none of that. There's even the Muslims. They believe in a God. The the, uh, 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 the American Indians believe in a God. There's 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 everybody on this earth has believed that there's a higher power. And God has God has sent the Holy Spirit to woo men, no matter if they believe, they believed in a uh, uh, in that true and living God that we believe in or not. They He sent He's everybody has had that opportunity, so nobody can say I didn't know. Can you imagine? Yeah, you ever hear that? Man? I had a boy yesterday. He says the, the light got in my eyes on the ball field and let the ball hit the ground. And guess what? The sun wasn't shining. It was cloudy. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we people, you know, just, if, if you leave the refrigerator door open and say, I didn't realize I left it open or leave the front door open. I, I didn't leave, realize. The people has always been that way, even in little things like that. They're obviously that way when it comes to God. They're, gonna, they're going to, at some point, uh, stand before God and, and think that 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 argument is going to work. I didn't see the light. Um, I couldn't see before the light. <laughs> I didn't know. It's not going to work. They did know. Somehow, somehow, some way, God is not going to punish somebody for not having the right information. Right? 
All right. At the uh, uh, at the appointed time, Noah, his his family, and the animals were all in the ark. The Bible then stated that the Lord shut him up, him in. The waters began to fall from the skies until the whole earth was uh, covered with water, and everything outside the ark drowned. And, and not only did the water come from the sky, we know it hadn't rained, but we understand that it come from everywhere. It come from the ground up. It come from the sky down. It just water was just it was like what what people might think of a tsunami now it was just it was there and uh and we know it took 40 days and 40 nights but god could have done it in a moment of uh, uh there was a there was a purpose for that number and we can study in the numbers if you want to but there was a, a reason for it now 40 40 has been a pretty uh, uh established number in the bible for a lot of a lot of scripture so all right Remember, it had uh, not rained in th this world, so this seemed impossible. Can you imagine what happened when they when it started raining and they had never seen rain? And boop, 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 and rain started falling on their heads. And they, well, can you imagine? They thought, you know, I ain't never seen this, and Noah was talking about this, and maybe we ought to go talk to Noah. And they get there, and the door's closed. I don't, I don't believe that's the case. I believe it took them standing in water or swimming in water for them to start hollering, hollering out. And, and there's a lot of people, if they knew that day of judgment, that, that moment in time that there was going to be judged on, they would change their ways. The Bible says if, 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 the, if the owner of the house would have known the thief was going to be there at a certain hour, he, he would have been there to protect his house. And, and uh, we're considered this house, is this body is considered a house. However, all of this happened just as Noah preached. The lesson for uh, us is that we should heed the uh, prophecies about the end of our uh, present world. The promises in the book of Revelation may sound fantastic to us, but these things will come to pass just as God has said. Once again, life uh, seems uh, good on unchained. Life seems too good yeah. on... Yeah, yeah good. Life seems to go on unchanged from day to day, yet there will be a day in the future when everything will change ever, uh, forever. One of those days will be the day uh, we die. After we die, we will face the Lord in judgment, and then all our earthly wealth will be forgotten, and only what we have done for the Lord will truly matter. One day, uh, Jesus will come again. He will come uh, for those who are uh, are his resurrecting those who are dead and and catch up catching up those who are alive and remain to the clouds to be with him forever. Later he will come to the Mount of Olives to the place where where he left this world and life will forever be changed. Open your hearts to the word of to the word of the Lord and find grace in His eyes. Place your faith in Jesus and be ready to meet God at the at the soon return of Jesus to the earth. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. Anybody got anything? That's a good lesson. I still like to say there's some things there that we won't understand until we can talk to the one that planned it that way. So, I will pray for and dismiss. Father God, we thank you for this, uh, this lesson, Lord. We thank you for uh, uh, letting us understand that the things that you've writ written in the uh, Old Testament and uh, uh, back in Genesis, Lord, even though our world may may think it's just craziness that we believe in those things, but we understand them to be the truth. And this world was flooded, and they can't deny those things. They even in the uh, uh, the rock formations and the things that they try to uh, to show that it didn't happen, Lord, they're constantly showing that it did, and we just. Pray that the world would understand that you are in control of those things and, and that they would accept your son as their savior before it's everlasting too late. We just, Lord, this world is not the, the world it was in, uh, maybe 200 years ago, but it is the world that was uh, in these biblical times that uh, Noah's Ark was, uh, was built and was the saving of those souls. And uh, our world is uh, quickly headed that, in that direction. We just pray that you'd keep us in the midst of those things and help us to to live our lives the way you'd have us to live them, even though we probably will be bombarded from each side. 
We just thank you for all you do for us. Once again, be with church and those that are on the prayer list of this church, uh, Lord, and especially for those that have cancer. We pray that once again a special prayer for Michelle and then what's going on in her life. Lord, we just thank you for being with them, and we thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.